both a CAT scan and an ordinary MRI are like a series of still shots taken of a slice through your head from multiple directions. The end result is a three-dimensional static picture of the anatomical structure. Whilst this type of image gives a lot of very useful information, it's also rather limited. To put it more starkly, let's imagine a person has a CAT scan or an ordinary MRI of their brain taken whilst they are in good health. A short time later, they are in hospital with a severe bodily injury, but not a brain injury, on a life support unit. Things take a turn for the worse, and they are pronounced brain dead. Whilst still on the life support unit, another CAT scan or ordinary MRI is taken of the brain. The life support unit would mean blood was still circulating throughout the body, including the brain. The life support unit is now turned off. A short time later, our unfortunate example person is pronounced dead. Entering the realms of medical fantasy, another CAT or MRI scan of the brain is taken within a few minutes after death. It may surprise you to know that all three CAT scans will be identical and all three MRIs will be identical identical. When a person is pronounced dead, the brain structure remains the same, and that's why all the CAT scans will be identical and all the MRI scans will be identical for our unfortunate hypothetical person. What's different is that death includes the complete absence of electrical and associated chemical activity that powers the neural network of connectivity throughout the brain. Given that neural network connectivity is there when you're alive and completely absent when you're dead, it's probably fair to assume it's an important aspect of brain function. We've known about these neural circuits for some time. They're often referred to as the white matter in the brain. White matter as such shows up on an ordinary MRI, but the way this white matter connects together into neural circuits that run throughout the brain is what doesn't show up on a CAT scan or an ordinary MRI. Proper brain function isn't just about anatomical parts looking like there's no damage with a CAT scan or an MRI. Proper brain function is also dependent on correct functioning of this intricate network of electrical and chemical neuroconnectivity, both within the various parts of the brain and between the various parts of the brain. The way to get a picture of these neural network connections is to pick up on the distribution of water in the brain. Water isn't just randomly or evenly distributed in the brain. It accumulates more in the long axons and dendrites of the neuron cells that make up the neural networks in the brain. Brain imaging technology enables us to see water distribution in the brain. Programmed for a special kind of image called a DTI, an MRI scanner uses a series of slices to gather information on the pattern of water distribution. And this reveals the pattern of neural networks within the brain. More and more of the complexity of neural network distribution within the brain can be added to our picture. Here, we're looking from the back of the brain forward. You can see a gap between the left and the right hemisphere. And you can get some idea of the massive connections between the two sides of the brain at the bottom of the gap. To help us make a little bit more sense of this mass of connections, we'll consult a recent publication from Oxford University Press. 2012 saw the publication of the Atlas of Human Brain Connections. On page 38 of the Atlas, 
there's a tractography reconstruction of the association, commissural, and projection pathways of the brain's neural connections. The association pathways begin and end within each separate brain hemisphere. That's the left and right sides of the brain. In these pictures, they've been colored green. These association neural connections are involved in the higher cognitive functions of language, visual spatial processing, memory, emotion, and praxis. That's making considered decisions about how to act in a given situation. The commissural pathways have been colored red. These neural connections run between the left and the right hemispheres, allowing the hemispheres to work together. They play a significant role in motor, that's movement of the body, perceptual and cognitive functions. The blue projection neural pathways allow brain function to be connected together vertically. This includes the all-important function of sense data gathered together in the thalamus, which is right in the centre of the brain, and then it being relayed out to the various relevant parts of the neocortex, or the outer layer of the brain. The blue projection pathways also go to the deeper brain structures, including the beginnings of the spinal cord.